Okay, this lesson is going to deal with what we refer to as recursive formula. So, recursive formula. We're going to look at two types. The first one we're going to look at is uh, given function notation. So what recursive formula looks like is going to be something like this. f of x in different variables. I'm going to use in here. f of n equals f of n minus 1. And then something to that. In this case, I'm going to put plus, let's say, 2. So really all this means is here is a term. Since this is the minus 1, that just means that's the previous term to this one. So say, for instance, I have this set of sequence numbers. 3, 5, 7, 9, dot, dot, dot. And to read a sequence, by the way, you must have at least three numbers. Well, this sequence would fit this particular recursive notation. Because what's happening every time, each and every time here, we are going up by 2. So the way recursive formula works is this number 3 right here is considered the first term. This is my second term, my third term, and then my fourth term. So if I want term number 2, so I'm going to slide this up here, second, there we go, so say for instance I want term number 2, so f of the second term, and what that means is I need f of, this becomes 2 minus 1 inside the parentheses, what is 2 minus 1? That's really just f of 1. So this whole thing right here is just replaced with the first term. Well, what was the first term? The first term was 3. So to get f of 2, I take the previous term, which in this case would have been 3, and then I add 2, and then that gives me 5. If I want the third term, then I have to take the second term, and add 2. What was the second term again? The second term was 5. So it's 5 plus 2. That equals 7. And that's my third term right here. Okay, so let's try to expand on this just a little bit. There are different ways to do function notation in recursive formula. There's all sorts of different ways you can uh, represent it. So say, for instance, it tells me f of 1 equals 4, and then gives me this recursive formula. f of n equals 2 times f of n minus 1. So what do I do? I take the first term, and all I'm going to do is exactly what it says here. I multiply by 2. So I start with 4. My next term, if I multiply by 2, so it would be, so if I want f of 2, that means I take 2 times f of 1. 2 times f of 1, remember, was 4. 2 times 4 is 8. So that would be 8. Then if I wanted the third term, all I'm really going to do is take this, multiply by 2. So my third term would be 16. Multiply this by 2. My fourth term would be 32, so forth and so on. So the word recursive just means to do the same thing over and over and over again. Okay, what if we make the recursive formula a little more complex? Say f of n equals 2 times f of n minus 1 plus 2. Now we have two operations to do. Multiply by 2 and add 2. So again, I'm going to start here with 4 as my first term. 4 times 2 is 8, but then I have to add 2, so that's 10. 
Now that's going to change my whole value of numbers. And then I have to take 10 times 2, that's 20, plus 2, then would be 22. And again, if you need to write it out, you can come up here, just plug it in, and work them out independently. Okay, another way to represent recursive formula is another notation. It's called A sub n. So it's going to look like this. A sub n equals A sub n minus 1 and then whatever. Okay, so again we can back plus 2. Okay, so again they have to tell you. So Here's the only difference in this particular notation for recursive formula. a sub 1 equals, let's say, 6. So our first term is 6. So then what do we do? We just build off of that. So we're going to say the first term is 6. To get my next term, I have to add 2. So here's another way you could think about it. Just write this, 6 plus 2. Well, 6 plus 2, that is 8. Then to get the next one, what I do, I have to do 8 plus 2. 8 plus 2 is 10, and then so forth and so on. So then here is our sequence of numbers just coming in this way. Again, you could work it out up here if you wanted to, and think of it this. a sub 2 equals a sub 2 minus 1 plus 2. The 2 minus 1 is 1, so a sub 1 plus 2. But what was a sub 1? Again, a sub 1 is 6. So it's 6 plus 2, and again, we get 8, the same thing we got right over here. So again, it's all on how you think of it. We'll do another example here using the same notation. So let's say again, a sub 1 is 6. This time, our formula is a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 times... 3. So what did I do? My first term is 6. Then I do 6 times 3. 6 times 3 is 18. Then to get the next number, I have to do 18 times 3. 18 times 3 is 54. So forth and so on. Finally, one of the things that you'll need to be able to do is also to identify what sequence notation, whether it's a sub n or function notation, f of n minus 1, represents a given sequence. So I'm going to go back to some previous examples that we did earlier. Let's say it's 4, 6, 8. Or again, to figure out formulas for sequence of values, you have to have at least three. So you ask yourself, what's happening every time? We're going up two. Okay, so if we're going up two, then if I do function notation, it's f of n equals f of n minus one plus two, because that's what's happening every time. Or we could use the notation a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus 2. Let's do another one. What if these are a sequence of values? 4, 8, 16. What's happening? So you have to think here. You might initially say, okay, I added 4. But then this is adding 8. Those don't match up. So that cannot be your rule for the sequence. So you have to go back and think, is it a different operation? What about this? Times 2. 4 times 2 is 8. It's 8 times 2. 8 times 2 is 16. That becomes our rule. So now, f of n equals f of n minus 1 times 2, or you could write the 2 in the front. Either way would be fine. Or if you do a sub n, a sub n equals 
So this time I'll write in front two times a sub n minus 1. Again, it really doesn't matter the location of the two. It could be in the front or it could be at the end. Let's do another example. It's a little more complex. So say for instance we have something like this. We'll start again, say with 4. Then we get 10, 22. So I just got through doing this one. So really here, you have to think about multiple operations. So it's not just adding, okay? Because if I do this, add 6, that gives me 10, but then this is add 12. So it's not just addition. So that doesn't work. You think about multiplication. All right? So 4 times 10, 4 to get to 10, you would have to multiply times two and a half. Okay, what's 10 times two and a half? Well, that's 25, so that doesn't work. So these get a little more complex, uh, but we're going to work with them having sort of like a multiple choice. So in this case, what do we have? We have times two, then plus two. Two operations. What's four times two? Eight. What's eight plus two? There's my 10. Go to the next one. Times 2. What's 10 times 2? 20. What's 20 plus 2? 22. So the more operations you add in it, the more complex the formula itself gets. So what would this formula be? f of n equals 2 times f of n minus 1. Then you add 2 to that. Or, again, Using the other notation, 2 times a sub n minus 1, then plus 2. And then we're going to build on these sequence of numbers doing particular types with patterns in algebra. But I just wanted to address with you what recursive formula looks like. And again, the word recursive just means to do over and over and over. You do the same thing over and over again to it.